Hi, this is Michael David Cobb Bowman for Cobb Vision. Today's version is a little bit of technology. Um, we're going to talk about case studies. And uh, essentially, what you do is uh, you set up a use case scenario uh, in the context of a data warehousing project in order to find out which users need which data marts. Obviously, your data warehouse is going to be very large. It's going to have a lot of atomic data. You don't really know what the aggregations are going to be. You don't really know what the dimensions are going to be because these come from all your source systems. So uh, there's three main ways that I approach, um, I approach use cases, and uh, there are three primary ways that people are going to access data. The first way is standardized reports. Standardized reports are those reports for which a customer really knows already what he's looking for. A typical example would be a, a cash flow uh, document uh, which shows negative or positive balances along a, a, a period of months or quarters. And basically the, the rows and the columns are exactly what you expect them to be. They're the same place all the time. This is kind of a static reporting. Now it can be dynamic reporting if you allow the user to select a few changes. But most of the time you have two or three dimensional reporting and uh, these are fairly straightforward. Uh, the use case for these uh, would demand a, a simple cube. You can have a lot of people access that cube and uh, you generally don't put a lot of security on that kind of cube because uh, the details of those kinds of things are, are pretty obvious. Um, the, second, the second kind of use case is for audit. An audit is basically when you need to reconcile and you need very low level detail in your data. So if I'm going to go, uh, let's say I'm using, um, not Oracle Financials, but uh, I want to talk about uh, the FICO modules of SAP because people generally understand that below departments you have projects. And project level detail is the lowest level of detail that most people ever look at. And this is something that you would get on an entry screen in SAP itself and people want to report that stuff back in, 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 in a more financial context uh, with, with their standard reporting. But when they get down into the project level, uh, you, you really might want to look at debits and credits and that kind of stuff, and that's a detail. That's an audit report. Audit reports tend to be large, and these are best suited for a specific table that is written for the audit. Um, uh, it generally doesn't take much to generate the queries necessary for audit. Uh, but you have to be very careful where you begin your audit and where you begin your standardized reporting. So you can do that in a number of ways. You can do it by department. You can, you can do it by the role of the individual. Uh, generally, I do it in terms of the uh, area of business where people have not really decided whether the data is good or not and people haven't lived with the data so they can't see at a glance at a high level report whether this data is valid. Also, when, when people are new and you have new metrics, uh, new KPIs that you generate, you probably want to have an audit. Also, if you add an additional system, which is replicating the data one place or another, you want to have an audit report. Okay, so the use cases for audit are, are pretty clear, and you just go through and ask those kinds of questions to find out if a user wants to get into that line of detail. Again, the thing to be careful of is to notice between um, the audit and a drill down of an analysis or a drill down of a standardized report. The third case, which I just briefly mentioned, is analysis. Analysis is when you don't really know where you're going to end up. You want the navigation system to take you someplace. So these are exceptions that you don't, that you have yet to discover. Now, in standardized reporting, you can have stoplight charting, you can have exceptions. That's kind of like dashboarding and, and, and that whole, you know, um, I'm, I'm Kaplan and Norton scorecarding. Uh, and, and those are when you know what the KPIs are and you don't have to search around for them. But analysis is when you are trying to find out things and you're generating ideas for KPIs. So you may be looking at sales trends. You may be looking at product market share. You may be looking at customer trends. This kind of information, you need a large database. Uh, you need a generally small historical set because there's not much you can do about uh, analysis of things that happened before. You want to do your analysis so it's, it tends to be predictive. So you can look at a three-month trend and say, okay, here's a trend in this product, in this market, in this segment, and that's, that's what we discovered. Again, analysis is about discovery. So you need a very large, wide-dimensional set so you can pick the right dimensions to find the correlations. And you also need uh, 
you need it to be shallow in terms of time so that you can do quick iterative queries. And those also should not generally be shared among all kinds of users because once you get past seven dimensions, they get kind of confused. So these are the, the primary ways that you get your use cases determined. And then you can, you can either customize that in, in terms of a functional way or you can optimize that in terms of a technical way from those three baselines. Okay, you, again, you always build a baseline application, get the data out there quickly so users can find it, and find out the way that they're using the data. And then, once you've come up with a use case scenario, then you redesign your data march specifically for that use case. So you can have a, a narrow database for your, uh, uh, your standardized reporting, which allows some interactivity, okay? Um, let me also say there's production reporting which is kind of a fourth use case. You don't see it too often in BI implementations because people are already generally doing that. But production reporting is like a standard statutory report that comes out all the time and generally management thinks of that as the book of reports. And so when they say I want to see schedule 43 then that's a standard uh, book of reports. It is not an on-demand kind of thing, it is a batch kind of thing. So that's really the fourth use case. You don't see that so much um, but uh, in BI implementations because it's generally done someplace else but it can generally be done quicker uh, and, and less expensive in a, in a BI implementation uh, if you know what you're doing. Okay, So those are three major use cases, one minor use case for the type of consumer of the reporting uh, scenarios that you have uh, within your thing. Again you use these to optimize your data marks and optimize the queries that go against those data marks and also um, maintain your security and understand how your users are using them and then evolve those. Again, your analysis when you're discovering can evolve into uh, KPIs which can evolve into a dashboard and a standard report. Uh, I haven't talked about data mining. I don't get many uh, requests for that because uh, there are not very many operational BI uh, customers out there. Uh, these are certainly customers that can can do with custom uh, BI that's done from scratch, but uh, in the most case, most customers that I deal with are not don't have an efficient enough methodology so they can crank out uh, their regular BI so that they have enough time to go back and do data mining for a whole new big set of data that they've never looked at before. Uh, but there there are all, uh, certainly cases uh, where, where 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 data mining is applicable. And, and for that, I would use kind of a, a visualization software and, uh, and, and build uh, very large things uh, with many dimensions and then kind of chop that down uh, theoretically. That's something that, that you can do a lot more in a functional design meeting uh, rather than to build something. But if you have the resources to do data mining, then, then you're, you're likely to be able to uh, quickly mart out something with an absurd number of uh, dimensions so that you can chop through that quickly, block and tackle. Uh, that would be that would be uh, preferable, but um, but most of the time you just do that in, in design and brainstorming sessions where you talk about what areas of the business need to look at which data. Um, <clears throat> and that is all today. I wanted to uh, make sure that I got this out so that you can understand something about uh, use cases and and my approach to uh, establishing use cases. And uh, that is all for today. This is Michael David Cobb Boeing. Did I say Boeing? I'm thinking about uh, a customer. Take care.